Welcome to the uh, Trading Group One meeting. Today is the 3rd of December, 2019, so welcome everyone. Uh, we're just talking about the uh, markets having a little bit of a sell-off. Uh, futures are down about 40 on the ES. And uh, so Andrew, you said it was looking like a similar situation uh, in the past? Yeah, if you look at the chart. Um, you wanna pull up your chart? Yeah, sure. Let me. Okay, I mean, you know, looking at what's going on right now in the, in the SPX, it looks a lot like the situation we had here where we had a pretty strong rally and now a big bear breakout. You know, if, if you look at what happened here, we had the same situation, but this was at the end of a move down. So this was like an exhaustion move, but this is at, you know, the beginning. So this looks like a good bear breakout. I think it looks similar situation to what we had here. And if you look at the VIX, this also looks similar to what we had at the same time. Two big bull bars. So this looks like it could go down some more. I guess last time was what, about 200 points? Uh, yeah, we went from 3,000 down to, yeah, almost. I think the logical area would be to test, you know, the, this, this area here, test the top of what it was a trading range. So we should get back down close to 3,000 again. That would be the first area I'd look for. That's logical. Yeah, we look on uh, if you look on the weekly, the, the weekly moving average is right around the same place. So that could also confirms that target area. You know, it's, it's been away from this moving average for a while. And if you look, it tends not to, you know, unless it's in a really strong bull trend like this, it tends not to be uh, away from that moving average for too long. And, you know, this is not this. This is a much stronger move up than this. So I'd expect it to come down and test this moving average within, you know, a couple of weeks So Thomas said, look at spotgamma.com. I haven't seen that one. Spot gamma. Well, the one interesting thing is the VIX futures have not gone into uh, backwardation. They're still in contango, not as steep as they were, but um, that, I find really interesting. After the last two days, I'd expect a different configuration than that. That's, you know, the one thing that doesn't fit in. We'll have to see how the uh, market ends up today. Yeah, it definitely isn't panic selling. No, the panic selling doesn't come until the end. And, you know, definitely a little bit of a flight to safety in gold. And definitely a flight to safety in bonds. Yeah, I'm looking at stockmarketupdate.com and uh, it says treasury yields are down a very large amount today, which means they're buying bonds, right? Yeah, the bonds are up huge. They're up over one and a half percent. The bonds are, are up as much as the Dow is down 1.6%. Wow. 
And even gold is up over 1%. So it's also interesting. The Russell is down the least in percentage terms. How does the Russell chart look? Well, you know, the Russell has been lagging badly for a long time. It barely broke out, uh, and now it's coming back in. It's been in a well-defined trading range all year. And now it tried to break out, and it's back in. So the, the Russell's been a laggard for quite a while. You know, everything else made new highs. You know, you see the difference in, in those charts. If you draw, well, Now, why can't I get I don't know, for some reason I can't draw, but if you, uh, you know, you connect these, we're, we're failing. We tried to break out of this line and we're failing here. So that's, you know, another reason to expect a decent correction. I don't think we're going to be going into a bear market, but I could see, you know, a move down like this or, or you know, not quite that, but something like this or this. You know, look at this move up. The bulls have been buying aggressively all the way up. So now it's going to be interesting to see what happens when they, you know, if, if they're going to buy this the way they've been buying here, or they're going to wait for more of a correction. You know, you look at this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's been eight weeks without a pullback. This is the first time we've gone below a prior week. So it'll be interesting to see if the bull, how aggressively the bulls buy now. Are they going to wait for more of a pullback or are they going to buy this week? This could still end up being something like this. Because, you know, you had a similar situation. Strong, you know, pretty strong bull trend, pretty strong bull trend. So let's see if this ends up like this or if this ends up like this or this with, you know, more selling. I would not want to make a prediction. I think you, you kind of have to let the market show you what it wants to do at this point. And I'd be, you know, if I have positions on, I'd be careful about my downside risk. So are you flat right now? Yeah, I'm flat. Um, the only thing I have on is um, I'm short some 40 puts on this stock here. They had some news that came out. Um, that hit the stock, but it's back above the strike price now. I'm short the 40 puts. Uh, where is it? So the puts were in the money for a little while. It looks like they're going to be bailed out by the move in gold.
That's the only thing I have on right now. So KL, is that a is that an ETF? I guess uh, um, Robert asked about updating uh, the expert signal stuff. So I guess I can um, let me clean up my screen a little bit here. I got too much stuff open. Uh, I got to really close some of these browser windows. All right, um, I guess I can share my screen now. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen shortly. Yep, we can see it. Okay, great. Um, so, I've got a couple of positions on. Um, I went long the British pound six days ago. Actually, I could just bring up a chart. Use a trading view for that, I guess. Um, And let's go on a, let's see an hourly chart maybe. Okay, so this uh, red line is the entry right back here. At, uh, I guess the actual price was um, 129.09, I think it was. So we're up about 100 pips at this point um, for this one. It's looking pretty good. I was thinking you put a trailing stop on it. I think I, I set the stop to here, but then last night we had a, a pretty nice move higher. Um, and then uh, two days ago, I had uh, on the Euro, I entered here and the, the next morning it had a nice big move up and it's been kind of going in this range. Uh, I have a trailing stop on it. Um, this is on the futures, it was actually, let's see, there's the futures. Uh, 70 is my trailing stop right now. It's a 30 pip trailing stop. So it's about right here. So it didn't get hit yet. It's trading above the stop. Um, but the uh, the total P&L that's open or unrealized is up 27.31. And that updates uh, the futures with delayed pricing every uh, 67 seconds. In the Forex prices, there's no delay. So every 67 seconds, it's updated. So that's fairly current. Um, if I go to the history, show all trades, it's looking like this at the moment. So these are the three open trades, doing pretty well. Um, nine winners, two losers. So these looks like they're they're both gonna they're all three of them are gonna be winners. So that should be uh, uh, what. 12 and two, so the win percent will be you know, up around 90%, I guess. Um, but all the numbers look really good, profit factor, Sortino ratio, all that stuff, of course. Um, but it's uh, it's going pretty well. Uh, one problem I have is a striker. Um, they, uh, they want me to um, email them the trades, but they're, uh, they only work during us normal US market hours. So they, uh, um, they only uh, see the trades that I put in, um, <laughs> you know, one third of the time. So I, I put the long euro trade on uh, about 10 o'clock my time Sunday night, and I got filled in the CTA and uh, other accounts I'm trading. Um, but Striker didn't even see my trade message until seven or eight hours later. And by that time, the euro had taken off and they missed the entry. So um, I'm either going to have uh, Leslie with the CTA uh, run run it through the CTA at uh, uh, through Striker, or 
maybe just do it right at Interactive Brokers. Um, not really sure the best way to do it yet, but um, Striker is definitely causing problems with those accounts. Um, you know, the, tr the stuff I'm trading is fine, but um, you know, you can't uh, put in orders and only uh, expect them to get filled a third of the time. That's just not acceptable. I mean, I could manage the stops to get out, but the entry is a bit different. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's going okay. I mean, the uh, the positions, the uh, it's a Euro trade. I think that's what we're looking at. Yeah, uh, I initially put a stop based on the daily bar. I think it was down here, and then um, after we got filled and it was starting to move up, I moved it up a little higher, and then switched it to a trailing stop after we had a really nice profit. So I don't want to give up, you know, all, most of that gain. So we're uh, we're looking pretty good as far as like this is one of the accounts I'm trading. Um, this started out at twenty seven thousand in September, and he added ten. So he's up almost eleven thousand dollars this year on say thirty seven thousand. So what's that? Um, eleven divided by thirty seven. He's up uh, about thirty percent since the middle of September. So that's that's going okay for him. Yeah, uh, we saw him at Thanksgiving, and he said, uh, "That's good, right? It's going well." <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, as far as uh, getting other symbols in there, I know Daniel has uh, s split out the uh, um, the version I've got into uh, the intraday one he's using. He's building one for me. And then he's also got a, a project going for futures. So he's laying the groundwork to add in like ES and any other futures we want, like gold, crude, whatever. Um, that's probably not going to happen until next year. Uh, the intraday one, he thought it'd be around the 1st of uh, January. Um, he sent me an email last week and said he, he was ahead of schedule. So hopefully that means I'll have it before Christmas, the intraday version. Um, but the uh, the six, the two, six, twelve, and twenty-four hour bar version is working pretty well, so um, can't complain about it. Uh, so that's, I guess, an update. Me, where's my chat? Take a look. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's green. We're uh, it's looking good. Um, the British pound was up pretty well today. Here's uh, just a P&L today on a two lot. So uh, basically, my my plan is uh, for every twenty five thousand, I'm going a maximum of three contracts, and mostly is because the interactive brokers margin um, on these futures contracts, it's like fifty five hundred to six thousand dollars of margin at ballpark. Uh, even though the CME requirement is more like eighteen nineteen hundred. So it's you know three times what it should be, um, but that said, you don't want to over leverage. So I'm happy just to stick to about you know three contracts per twenty five thousand um, as a rough guide. And uh, on the British pound on the uh, on the account for the class or the the the, the service, I, I went long on one lot because of that kind of um, going sideways action. It was. Um, you know, it looked like it was going higher, but I wasn't too confident in it. So um, I just did a one lot. It looks like it's breaking out to the upside slowly, but um, the euro was a much more convincing long. So I did two lots there versus a one lot on the pound. So that's uh, that's an update for that. Um, any questions? Okay. Um, oh, I guess I could talk about Maverick. Um, I've uh, gone through all the, the training for uh, Maverick FX uh, trading. They're a prop trading firm. They also do uh, option stuff too. Basically, you have to keep 20% uh, risk capital in the account of your own money. So the, the Forex stuff starts with $10,000 accounts and options is 25,000. So the Forex uh, side, uh, the traders had to put up 2,000 initially of their own money 
and the options traders are 5,000. And you have to maintain that 20% risk capital, but they'll keep adding money to your account as long as you keep having consecutive winning months. I think if you have two consecutive winning months, they'll bump up your capital. And uh, I know they, they will go up to 800,000 of capital that they'll let you trade after, you know, it takes a while to get there. They have one lady that did it in like a year and a half, I think. Um, but, you know, if you're trading 800,000 and you keep 80% of the profits, it's like trading over 600,000 of your own money. Now, you would have to have uh, 160,000 of your own money in the account by then. Um, but if you just let your trading profits ride as you're uh, growing, then it's kind of self-funding itself. Uh, there's a $3,000 fee to kind of get in the door. And then after you have, uh, I guess, a month or two, I think of your first month of profits with the funded account, then they give you a $3,000 bonus back. So you, you get that back. Um, unless you're running it through a business, you'd have to pay tax on that 3000 though. So I'm running it all through Aramir, but um, that would be just a caveat. If you're uh, interested in doing something like that, you would want to uh, set up a business to do what would be the best way. Uh, the revenue split, it starts at 70-30, so you keep 70% of the profits. And then I think once the capital gets up to 50,000, then it's a 75% split for on your, your side. And then I forget where the break point is, um, a little bit higher, maybe 75 to 100, then it's 80% for the trader. So it starts out pretty good. You know, it's 70% uh, as minimum when you first start out. So that's not too bad. Um, they've been around for a while too. Um, they have uh, some pretty good training. Um, I'm using expert charts, so I don't really use the same style of trading that they do. But um, you know, if you're not using that, you're using the more traditional charts. This is pretty good. Um, I do have. Uh, they gave me some links um, that I can give people to if you're interested in signing up, at least talking to them. Let's see, there's the option or the forex one, and that's the one for options. They could go there and it'll redirect you. Um, but it's it's interesting, a pretty good organization. They have uh, two weekly meetings to talk about Forex. They also do, I think, option stuff too. Um, um, they offered me to, uh, they're, they're fast tracking me because I've been trading you know, for a while already. Um, I just had to give them two months of uh, live broker statements to prove that I'm actually making money. And then um, they're fast tracking me, so I'm. I just have to write up a trading plan and give it to them, and then they'll uh, get the process going of funding the account. So I'm, I'm pretty close to it. It should be trading with them fairly soon, probably next week or two, I guess, before the end of the year. But it's interesting. Uh, no, you don't have to use their strategies. Um, in fact, I talked to them. Um, I talked to Rob Reinhold, I think his name is, uh, one of the guys he works with. And they, uh, you know, they looked at Aramir and the stuff that I've been doing, and they know that I'm not trading the same way that they are. So um, you, you, that's part of the trading plan you have to submit. You have to write up what you're doing. And then basically they say if you're having problems, and they can come back to the trading plan you gave them, and basically are you using your own trading plan? Um, it's just kind of a guide, but um, he said most of the times if people are having problems, they've gone off the rails and aren't following their own plan. But they're usually uh, younger, newer traders too that, are, that they have to uh, help. And that's kind of the reason. But yeah, they said, I, I can keep trading the same way I do. That's not a problem. Oh, I think, uh, isn't that tomorrow? Let me see. It's tomorrow. It better be tomorrow. <laughs> I thought it's tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the fourth, tomorrow. All right. So, uh, hey, Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I guess there's another question. Um, I have to take their final test. Well, the way they have it set up, it's a learning management system in LMS. So they have all these different classes and then quizzes along the way. So 
I don't know how many quizzes there were, maybe about half a dozen or so. Uh, but you can retake them as many times as you want. So um, it's uh, pretty easy to pass them. They're pretty basic. I mean, the, the stuff that I was doing was all 4X, but it's nothing complicated. And then they had a couple of strategies that they, uh, a lot of their traders use. And um, they, uh, they had some questions about that, and like, you know, where would you put your stop and all this stuff. Um, actually, I, I built a page um, that kind of uses some of their ideas here. Um, so with expert charts, I've got these um, these charts, uh, British pound, the euro, the Aussie dollar, and the Swiss franc. And then um, you, you set your entry price, your stop, and your target. Let me just have an example. So 1.3, 1 1.3, 1 or say, say I'm going long, 1.25 and 1.31. Then that calculates what your, uh, how much uh, potential profit you've got, what risk you're setting up, and what your ratio is between your uh, reward to risk. And they like two or higher. So actually, let me make that, uh, oh, that should turn it green. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then they had this uh, position size calculator. So typically, you'll put in like 2%. And if you start, say, with a $10,000 account, and here your stop loss is uh, 50 pips and you're say trading the British pound. This tells you um, what you should trade. So in this example, you would trade $40,000 um, British pounds with uh, you know, before many lots or 0.4 lots, but you can actually just put 40,000 in the order at a Trader Workstation. And they use Trader Workstation, by the way. Um, so that uh, kind of puts it all in one place. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, halfway through, they canceled your account. Oh, that's weird. Did they tell you why they canceled it? Um, and as far as the options, I believe it's options on anything like uh, SPX or whatever should be fine for the options. Um, so the plan with them is uh, I'm going to start with 4X and then as the account gets bigger and I have more time, then I'll go, I'll, I'll add options to it. But uh, for now, I'm just going to start with 4X because I've got, you know, Expert Charts is doing really, really well with 4X trading. In fact, I see the British pound is going up a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, Stephen, I don't know. Did they give you any reasons why they, they canceled your account? That would be kind of, they should give you some reason. Oh, okay. Well, um, so far I haven't had any uh, bad experiences with them. Um, one of their uh, senior guys, uh, he's running a hedge fund. He, he lives in Florida, um, <clears throat> probably not too far from you, Robert. And uh, he asked if the strategies that I'm using could be traded with 200 million. So I figured they could be. So he was going to have a, a, um, a talk with his partner and see if they can actually integrate some of what I'm doing with their fund. So uh, who knows uh, where it's going. But um, yeah, as long as uh, Expert Charts is generating really good signals, um, you know, lots of good possibilities. We're giving them their learning updates. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, Robert uh, Emery is his name. I'll, uh, I don't know what the name of the fund is. I think they're in Delray Beach. Yeah, Stephen, I'll uh, I'll let you know. Um, so far, it's been a good experience overall. Uh, I haven't really had any complaints. But uh, if it doesn't work out, I will let everyone know. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, it looks like we're ticking up a little bit here. So just as a thought experiment, if I closed out these trades, I'm just gonna do this just to see what kind of results it would have. I'm gonna update these to close them out. Oops. And I'm just doing this so I can see on the history tab on the class page uh, what the returns would be so far this month. And then I'll go undo that. Let's see, history. Okay, so once these are closed, assuming it was closed this minute, um, it would be up uh, 12,300. And if I do it by month, it would be this. So um, yeah, looking pretty good. In fact, if I go to performance page, this is what the, uh, closed results per month would be. So now I can go undo that. So <laughs> because they are still alive. And let's see now where are they? I think that one's one of them. And this one. Is that right? Make sure I got the right one. Did they open them? <clears throat> that one should be open. And this British pound should be open. Yep, looks like I got the right ones. Okay, we're all restored. Okay, so I think that's all I've got for the updates. Um, I guess I can stop sharing my screen. So Tim, you said your, uh, your road trips, you're holding off on making adjustments? Yeah, well, I really don't need to <clears throat> today, although I'm watching. <clears throat> and I said that if we got to Let's see, I think it was 3060 on one of them. I would add a debit spread and flatten the delta a little bit, but we're not there. And uh, the other one was clear down to like 3025, I think. So <clears throat> PL is obviously hurt today from this, but um, it's all just volatility. And, you know, if I don't make any adjustments, it'll, that'll come out, you know, sooner or later. Yeah. All volatility comes out at expiration, right? <laughs> yep, right. So, um, but I'm watching and we'll see. Um, I don't know what else to say about those. <laughs> I do have a double calendar on, which is interesting. I guess uh, I'd like to show that if you, if I can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should be able to share your screen. Uh, it should start to come in. Okay, there we go. Now, let me get filter swim over here. If I can do it. There we go. There we go. You see it? I do. Okay. So this is a double calendar that I put on maybe last week sometime. Well, I might as well look it up. So let's see. I put, I opened that on... November 22nd, so it's been a couple weeks, I guess, and uh, started out like this. It was a double calendar. Um, <clears throat> went up a whole bunch, uh, and so I, you know, up in, up in here somewhere, I took off the bottom one. That's that, this trade here, and uh, sorry, why is it? Yeah, there we go. The graph was slow to update. So um, now we've come back down to 3077, which is about here. 
And according to the rules that I'm trading, this is where I would add the bottom one back on. So I've worked up two transactions here at two different strikes just to see. Right now, I think I would favor this one. So if I put this back on, here's what it'll look like. Now the short expires on uh, 16 December. So we're coming into the end game on this trade. But if I'm able to do something like this and write it out for a few days, it'll, it'll turn positive. So, and it has 345 positive Vega, which is uh, what I like because I'll hedge off some Vega against uh, my road trips. So uh, not a very exciting trade, but uh, I did this to get a little positive Vega and maybe have a little bit of a downside hedge. And it looks like it might be working for that. Being down $190 is, um, what's two times 190, 38? Yeah, so it's just about 5% down, which is acceptable. And uh, we'll just stay in the trade. But so far, I haven't made that adjustment yet today. I'm kind of watching to see what happens from here, you know. And if, if today is like it has been in the last week or two, it'll make a big move and then won't do anything for several hours at least. And then it may or may not make a bit of a move in the last half hour. So I'm kind of going to just wait a little, an hour or two here if I can and see where the market goes before I do it. Just hang on a second. Let's see. Um. <coughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So um, that's that trade. Um, I. Uh, <coughs> Took some unused cash in my accounts and bought a bunch of C, uh, one and three-month three month CDs yesterday just to park the funds for a little while. Um, and they're, the one to three-month CDs are making about 1.6% anyway, which I thought was pretty good for a three-month CD. So I'm um, kind of not going to go whole hog into the market right here. I'm going to take it easy for a little while. Um, if I, say, I was going to say, how, how's your uh, CL trades doing? <coughs> yeah, hang on just a second. Let me save this. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> man, I stuff in my throat today. Okay. So let's see if it comes up here. I probably need to load it. Okay. I I'm feeling good about my CL trade and. Uh, as as I wished, CL is not responding to a big move today. <clears throat> but that's that should not be, it. That should this, be good for you. Yeah, this is that's not it. So is my my history is all messed up on that one. Okay, I'll try that one more time. But uh. Wait, no, that's it. Okay, I got it this time. So here's my CL trade. This is what it looks like right now. Um, <clears throat> I had put it on somewhere when oil was about 57 or so, 57.50, I think. And uh, when we took a big dip down to about 55 something the last two days ago or whatever, I added one more put to it. And that's this trade here. Got 31 cents for that. It's now 20 cents. So that puts paying off. And uh, if we go up a bunch, I'll sell one more call. So then I'd end up with a two-lot strangle, although it might be different strikes. So <clears throat> this one's crunching away. We just need some time on it, and uh, we'll go from there. There was a question <clears throat> from Adrian. Uh, how close to expiration will you add the lower calendar? On my double calendar? Right. Good question. Um, I think I'd probably go through maybe this Friday, which would be six, it'd be 10 days or so. I'd, I'd add it up to nine or 10 days to expiration. Past that, probably wouldn't, because you probably couldn't make it pay off. 
Um, and Dale said, take a look at MaxMyInterest.com for short-term cash returns. Oh, can't wait to let's take a look. So max, max MaxMyInterest.com. Max. Thank you. Have an extra E there. Uh, there's, okay, let's try this again. Max my interest. Yeah, that looks like it could be it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll add that to the uh, meeting links on the recording. Do you have to log in or can you see anything without logging in? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll have to uh, have to watch that video. Um, there used to be a long time ago a service kind of like this that would tell you the highest CDs out there, but um, they didn't tell you, you know, you just did it. They didn't say anything until after you did it. Then they sent you a bill for like 10 or 15 bucks, you know, so <laughs> I haven't used that one for some time. But <laughs> if this one might, this one might work well. And then Adrian asked, how much is Toss paying now on a sweep account? You know, I looked that up uh, just yesterday. It was something like 0.1%. It's really low. Um, I think. And then Tim Broff had another uh, bankrate.com is another one to look at. Bankrate.com. Okay. We can bring that one up into the thing. Bank. I was thinking about buying treasuries, T-bills, but um, with the CD rates up that high, I just bought CDs. So here again, I probably have to log in or something. CD rates, let's see if this will tell us anything. Oh, maybe it's all here. 2.2% on a two year. That's not bad. That's not really bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have an account at Schwab where I do that, and um, Schwab has a good um, <clears throat> scanner thing to show you uh, rates by maturity and stuff. And um, I usually just select one from there and, and do it. But um, anyway, cool. Yeah. So um, that's oil. I don't have any gold on right now. I, I, it might be a good time to put one on because if you look right here, GVZ is up 15%. Uh, it has been down for days and days on end. And so maybe it'd be time to work one of those up. Oil and they do those, the short strangles and gold too? Yeah. I haven't done it for maybe a month, but um, you know, if we take a look. Maybe, okay. Probably do the February. Um, find a delta that is uh, about eight or nine. 14, 15. So strangle and then the calls would be Well, maybe sixteen ten. Okay. We have to turn this off. Okay. Oh, I see. I hit it twice. Sorry. Okay. Thirteen, fifteen, and sixteen ten. Yeah, and so you know when I do this, I like to have. Um, the credit be five or six bucks and uh, sure enough now it's about 620. Um, I've looked at it from time to time in the last week or two and it's been like 450 or something so this is I would say probably definitely responding to the rise in GBZ and this might be an acceptable trade here. Take a look at it. Um, for some reason that graph looks a little funny but uh, oh right. That's why. There we go. Um, that might be a reasonable trade. If we did two of them, 
that might be reasonable. I'll think about it. I don't know if I'll do it today or not, but I'll think about it. <laughs> and uh, my uh, <clears throat> road trip. Let's see here. Let me clear out all my simulations. Okay, and then we'll go to SPX and import. Okay, here's my December 31st road trip. There should be a graph there. Back on single. There we go. Okay, and now I'll make it look better. My computer is. I'm. I'm about to rebuild this computer. It's. It's acting slow and funny lately. I do not tolerate slow computers. How old is it? Well, it's old. <laughs> it's probably seven or eight years old. Oh yeah, it's time for a refresh. Yeah. It's a core i5 though. It should be able to handle run and just think or swim and, and I'm meeting, but how much yeah. RAM do you have in it? Four gig. Okay. Yeah. It you know, you know how Windows uh really responds quickly when you reload it, you know. Uh, I don't know why. And so maybe I'll just try that. But anyway, here is my December road trip. PL has gone down a little bit today, but not too bad. And you can see I'm well positioned in the graph here. I should look at these call. I'll look at these calls later. Maybe I'll remove them today. And uh, yeah, down here somewhere, I would probably add a debit spread and take out some of this delta. But uh, I'm really not managing this by delta at this point, so I really want to just keep the graph. And let's see if I show you my other one. It looks very similar, but it's a January one. And um, all the same comments apply here too, although this one I would probably take some delta out, maybe around 30, 60, somewhere in there. I'd have about 11 delta. And this one I am kind of watching the delta more closely because it's earlier in the trade. And uh, I'd probably take out about half of that delta and we get down to 30, 60, that's all. And uh, other than that, that's all my trades except for all the covered calls, which are I haven't checked on yet today, but um, they're doing fine. Got my dashboard here on my other screen. There's really nothing to do on them today, so I just uh, I could have an easy day, except for watching. Yeah, just monitoring. I'm gonna go over to Dave Thomas's and fix his printer after we're. After I'm done here, he's, his printer is having trouble connecting to the router, so okay, get that work. Yeah, I keep meaning to send him an email. I know when we had lunch or uh, a drink at the Starbucks, he talked about maybe doing a trade alert service. Oh yeah, well I'll tell him that uh, you're still meaning to send him an email. <laughs> yeah, I'll send him one. I, uh, okay. I just I just keep forgetting, but thanks for reminding me. Yeah, okay. And say say hi to him when you see him. Yeah, sure. Okay. And there's another guy here who wants to meet you when you come back. Uh, Wayne, uh, we'll get together with him too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we, we still have to um, get our travel plans together for next spring, but um, we also want to go down to Texas to see our son in Austin. Oh, okay. Um, but we did like coming to Seattle. That was fun. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know what else I can show. Oh, there is one more thing I can show. Um, I, you know, you always have something you're working on, right, for a new trade or new possibility. And I have probably talked about these short butterflies once before. I don't know if I have or not, but um, that's not it. So hold on just a second. That's funny because I was looking at some short butterfly strategy about two weeks ago. Must be this one. All right, for some reason that's messed up. So, what? Anyway, uh, we have SPX expirations on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. so yesterday I was testing a bunch of these short butterflies, just paper testing, paper trading them. 
Maybe it's this one. Okay, hold on. And uh, <clears throat> I paper traded one, two, three, four of them yesterday. Three of them would have worked uh, between five and ten percent, and the fourth one was a two-day one, which uh, can work really well with those. And that's what I'm trying to find here. Um, let's try this. Is it this one. This one. This is it. Okay. Um, now that graph looks very funny, but uh, there we go. I put it on when SPX was at 3120.44, and um, as you know, these are short, short butterflies, and they benefit from a move, and not even that big of a move. I mean, you see right here, 3120 to 3110, a 10-point move took us out of the tent, uh, which gets into the credit range. At least on paper, it was about $1.70 credit when I did it, and today, with the move, it's up $120 it's in one day. So on a $1,000 um, in margin, so 12% one day. And if we stay here, I could just sit in this and get up to 17% uh, by tomorrow. So I'm, uh, I'm excited about turning this into a trade that'll work for me. And um, I'm writing up little rules that I might follow. And um, tomorrow we have another expiration. I'll test it again and uh, keep developing the trade. Yeah. And I guess I should give credit. Jeff Ogden came up with this apparently uh, seven or eight years ago, but I um, haven't heard 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 from him or heard about it since. So I'm kind of just resurrecting it and now trying making it my own trade. Yeah, I remember his presentation, and um, I don't think he actually traded it. I think it's just something he came up with and presented, but I don't think he was actually trading. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, um, I do know he was mostly trading it in um, equities. You know. Right. But, um, yeah, because I asked for performance results and they never had any, so I yeah. assumed he just wasn't trading it. Yeah, but um, I think it can work in SPX, and I'd really rather do it in SPX, so I'm I'm developing it. <laughs> Thomas says, "Add one more butterfly, and you'll start to speak German with the A and the V, like Iggy's uh, Schwalbe trade." <laughs> Yeah, well, um, you know, we like uh, nice, pretty graphs on our trades, which isn't really the goal, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe maybe this makes a nice little graph. Uh, obviously, the bid and ask prices and the market doesn't know what to do with this T plus zero graph because that's definitely not the right graph. But uh, that's a characteristic of these. The the black shawls and the pricing models and all that stuff kind of go out the window with these expiration day trades like this. Yeah, option view has big problems when you have boxes or uh, riskless positions or, you know, it, it, the T plus N lines get crazy sometimes. Oh, okay, right, yep. So I'm marking down on my piece of paper here that I closed this for about 120, 130 bucks or so, but there'd be no reason not to just stay in this and let it let it um, go to its max. Let it percolate a bit. Yep. There was a guy, oh, it was an options a trading group on Yahoo, the Option Club. I don't even know if it's still active. Uh, years ago, there was a former market maker who hung out there, Michael Catalico, I think his name was. But, but he had a really uh, um, interesting um, thing that when you're learning to trade, you should take a strategy like this and trade both sides of it. So, you know, trade the short butterfly and the long butterfly and make money on both trades. Uh, it was an interesting uh, intellectual exercise. Well, it's it's make money on both trades part that is, um, you know, <clears throat> the, the challenge. <laughs> right. Well, but it just gets your brain thinking about, you know, how should I adjust it if it goes this way or that way or sits, and, you know, if I'm long or short. Yeah. But actually, that's a good point. This trade could actually work that way. So let me just open up um, what that would look like if you did it. Well, you wouldn't do it at this strike right now. So where are we? 30, 80. So let me just um, change the strikes to 30, 80 and 5 point wide. So 30, 85, 30, 75, 75. Here we are today. I know it's not expiration day, but if you look at this, uh, a couple things come to light. Um, 
break even is 30.73, seven points down or about six or seven points up, okay? So um, if you're long like this, uh, you would want it to stay plus or minus seven points. Now, remember, typically I'd be doing this on expiration day. And so if, if we have a day like we've had in over maybe the last two weeks where the market will move something in the first hour or first half hour, and then it'll be flat all day until either the end of the day, like it was most of the time, or until noon or 1230, that's a half hour before the close. Um, you could put this on when it's flat on expiration day and make the trade work. And it has a decent potential, you know, it has $400 in the peak here. So um, it could be done. And, um, you know, it's been one of the frustrating things with these short butterflies in the last uh, week or two while I've been paper trading them, that the market would go to a strike and you say, okay, I'm going to put this thing on and then it would be flat and not do anything for hours. And that will make this into a loser when you're short. Right. So um, what I want to do is I want to profile that and find out statistically how often it does that. Um, because then I can know if I have a statistical advantage or not if I, if I did this at certain hours of the day. I haven't done it yet. But that's a possibility. Yeah, I always thought it was an interesting uh, challenge to uh, to make it work on both sides of the trade. Because, you know, every trade you put on, somebody's taking the other side. Right. And if I put both of these or on. so they say. Yeah, exactly. That's what it would look like. Um, I mean, that's not a particularly bad looking graph, you know, right there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's uh, not going to be my bread and butter. It's going to be like the parking. It'll be additional income or something. And um, see if I can turn this into something that can work. Well, speaking of the parking trade, maybe you and Dave want to update that. Oh. Well, we could. Um, Just a suggestion. It's been a while. Our presentation? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe do it together. Since he's the co-founder or co-creator. Yeah. He's done one or two recently, I think. Um, I have only done one or two in the last few months. And actually, today might be a day to put one on, but um, I'm, I haven't looked at that yet. Uh, parking could be done. Let's see. We just work it, work it up. So the simple rules are about 30 days to expiration. And two times this number here, which is 236. So it's 3080 minus 236. Quick, do that in your head. What's that? 2850-ish. Uh, 2844. You're pretty good. <laughs> Had a calculator out there. Okay. okay. So we go to 2850 or so and see what kind of credit we get. Um, I'll be right here. Put on a... 20 point vertical and some dollar 35. So seeing this, I would probably lower the strikes. So let's go down um, 20 points. Might even lower the strikes another 10. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know if you'd actually get that, but here we go, 2790. There you go. Something there you go. Something like this would be what I would consider if I was to do it right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, have a nice little vol pop. Might, might not be a bad day for it. Might not be a bad day, right. Right. So, yeah. You could scale in too. If you wanted to do say like a two or three lot, just do one today and see what happens tomorrow. Right. It moves, moves down lower, put another one on. Right. If we look at a chart of the VIX, uh, what kind of spike are we getting today? Let's see if this comes up. There it goes. This is a one minute chart. So we had a high an hour ago. But if I go into a daily chart, expand that part. Yeah, we're getting a decent little spike yesterday and today. 
Yeah. And I noticed that yesterday was up something like ten percent, you know, and I didn't think too much of it because it can do that. But um, with today's follow through, I'd say we're developing a spike. Sure looks spiky. <clears throat> So, yeah. Okay, well, we're pretty much at an hour. Um, Mike is uh, presenting his thing tomorrow, not today. So, uh, Mike, do you have any teasers for us for tomorrow's presentation? Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, I, w I wish I had something pithy to say, but uh, I don't. So, um, just hope that, you know, hope folks get a little bit out of it tomorrow and um, look forward to doing it. Now you've been live trading this for a while, right? I've been, I always trade credit spreads. Yeah. Um, and I just think the environments changed so dramatically in favor of the trader that, you know, it'd be worth um, revisiting it. And, uh, you know, there's some com new compelling reasons uh, with the shift. And so, that's kind of the premise right all right so we will see you tomorrow morning 11 o'clock eastern and um yeah look forward to it if if you can't catch the live one obviously it'll be recorded and posted on youtube uh so you know subscribe to the youtube channel it's free so you get the updates there and uh barring that uh hope you have a good trading week and we'll see everybody next week for a uh, trading group one sounds good thanks tom yeah, thanks everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time.